Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome back to 10 Count. I'm C Fall, but on today's edition, I gotta get a little glamour in my life. Mariah May, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I am doing great. Life is peachy keen, jelly bean. But today we're talking about you, not me. Let's talk about your face is everywhere right now. Every stardom poster I see, you are on. How does it make you feel? Because stardom has been one of the big proponents of women's wrestling for as long as I can remember. It has been there before everyone was talking about women's revolutions and other federations. How does it feel to be kind of on every single poster? Scary. <laughs> scary. No, I mean, for me, like, stardom has been, it's like you said, it's, it's been like a mainstay of women's wrestling, and it was the revolution before it became a mainstream thing. But for me, like, when I started wrestling, I remember I discovered stardom, and I was like, whoa, what is this? And I was like, this is where I need to go, because they wrestle like the super juniors, they just, they kick, oh, they're so good. And I was like, this is the way I want to wrestle. And I remember literally since I started training, I was like, how can I work like that how can I be like that and I try to like emulate the style I try to learn it but obviously if you really want to be like stardom you've got to go there you've got to train in the dojo you've got to go and wrestle the best of the best so it's been a dream of mine for so long and between the pandemic and so many other setbacks I just I always believed but it just kind of fell further and further away from me and then this perfect storm happened and here I am and every time if there's like a press conference or you know like a tech rehearsal and it Puts, it goes on the screen the big match graphic and I'm there like this and I'm like wait what like that's me on the poster so it's it's an amazing amazing feeling I feel so honored and it, it doesn't feel real it, it's it's very surreal um, well I'm glad dreams can come true for you because sometimes they don't for others and obviously yours is continuously growing now how did this happen how did you and stardom come together who reached out to who how did all the pieces line up perfectly so Mina actually found Zyra and I because she's oh. forming this team called Venus and she was looking for international talent because it's the number one international team. So she's looking for the best of the best international talent and she actually found me and took me to stardom and said, look, this is this girl. And um, I mean, who would have thought, right? Because like Club Venus didn't even exist when I wanted to go to stardom so it's just those perfect storms that happen in like circumstances that lead to this moment and uh, yeah Mina found me I wow. forward for it yeah so you yeah. were That's you crazy. were recruited to be part of Club <laughs> Venus which is very interesting because again every time I go on Twitter and type in stardom or see stardom there's always these dance numbers like <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, like, TikTok is the biggest thing for so many people right now. And, and they're probably like, how do I do, you know, the Glamour dance? How do I do the Club Venus dance? And every time there's a new one, and I feel like I need to get involved with it right now. Like, I, how do I join? And this is a terrible dance, but, you know. <laughs> hey, every time like I go to the bunch right now, but, something uh, different happens every single time. Like, I, we, we have, like, a little set routine. And then there's an in-between, and every time I'll just see, like, a clip, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Like, you just don't know what's going to happen when you get out there. But I feel like we should actually do a TikTok, like, tutorial yes. of the Club Venus dance, and then everyone can send us their auditions. And Ooh. Pick them you know, everyone wants to go viral. Well, that sounds like the perfect way for you to get your dance viral. But that's amazing that you were pretty much drafted to join Stardom. I know. <laughs> and so how did that feel? Because you're saying, you're talking about minutes ago, that it felt like your dream to join Stardom was just disappearing slowly into the darkness. And out of nowhere, light appears and you are drafted to join Stardom, join Club Venus, get this ball rolling. Like, how, how does that make you feel inside? Oh my gosh. It just, it just gives me hope. Like, because I remember someone always says to me the best piece of advice was someone who's very successful. Like now they're, they're killing it. And they said like, your back will be up against the wall and then it will happen because I felt like I had exhausted every single thing. Like I'd toured Europe, I'd toured America, I've gone to Canada, I've even done acting, I've done modeling, I've done all these different things and done all this extra work to try to get an opportunity to work, to try and get an opportunity to wrestle. Yeah, you know, do I wanna be successful and travel? Sure, but I just wanted to wrestle. And I felt like, you know, it was such a limited opportunity and it was just slipping so far away from me. And they're like, your back is gonna be against the wall and then it will happen. They're like, when you think you're gonna give up, and you keep going, it will happen. And it sounds so cliche. And I was sitting there like down in the dumps, like, oh, I just don't think it's, this, this, nothing's going to happen for me. And then just out of the blue one day, I got a message and I was just like, 
this isn't real at first. <laughs> I was like, this is a prank. Like, this is insane. And then it, it was. And I just remember, like, even until I stepped off the plane, I was saying it, it just didn't, it didn't feel real. Like, I didn't want to believe it until <laughs> I was here. Like, I just felt like something was going to happen. Like, between, like, the pandemic and everything else, I was like, something's going to happen. A restriction's going to change. Something, oh, no, we don't, you know, we're going to use, oh, my God, I don't know. And then, like, once I stepped off the plane, I just remember being like, Oh, it's happened. Like, it, was, it was an amazing feeling because you know I've worked really hard for years for this and the only way to really achieve like stardom and this style of wrestling is coming to Japan and stardom is like the biggest women's wrestling promotion so you know it, it's very surreal to be here it's an honor and I'm just ready to work hard and see what happens next so with stardom pretty much growing at a rapid rate right now it, it seems like the past few years obviously the pandemic ruined momentum for everybody, not just any one company. It, it, it sucked the life out of companies for a while. And now with Stardom growing at this rapid rate, like how do you think Stardom can connect more to American audiences? Because right now, like I, I can, I, I'm in, I'm deep into wrestling. So I know what's going on where, but as a fan trying to get into Stardom, how do you want them to perceive this organization? And how do you think they can, reach out and get more interaction with fans in America and stardom? So, I mean, it's interesting about the pandemic because I almost feel like in a, in a weird way, stardom continued to excel. Mm. And I'm not sure why why that is. I, I don't know if it's just because this work rate matches these women were having, but it's always just had this like rolling momentum. And I just feel like, it's like I said, when I started wrestling and I discovered stardom, I was hooked. I just didn't know about it. You know, when I was younger, you watched WWE, really. You might go onto YouTube and discover a bit of, like, impact or a few indies, but you don't really uncover this stuff until, you know, you you get into wrestling, you get deep into it, and you're a bit older. So I feel like it's been steadily rolling along, but I think now that, you know, restrictions have lifted and they can start to bring in more Westerners, that's going to bring eyes in. Just because, say, if I have, you know, I don't know, 60,000 fans or something, and they see me because I've seen a few people be like, how do I watch this? Why do I watch this? Da, da, da. And, you know, so that's a new way to get them in. And then once they watch it and they see, you know, Mina, they see Julia, they see all these just incredible women who all look so different and have such different characters. Like there's so many factions and every faction has its own vibe. Like there's something for everyone. And I feel like once if one person just gets you through the door, you're going to be hooked because there's so much there that you will like. And I think as well with Mercedes coming as well, she's, you know, one of the biggest women's wrestlers on the planet. And, you know, she's coming after Kyrie, and I, I bet she's got her eyes on a couple of other people too in stardom. So that's definitely going to shake things up. And I think that's going to bring in more Westerners to watch stardom because what they're doing is, is, is really some of the best women's wrestling I've ever watched. Some of the best wrestling, actually, I'm going to say that, that oh, I've yeah. watched. 100%. So I think people just need to see it. And I think bringing in people like Mercedes, forming Club Venus, which is an international team, is going to help bring different people in and, and continue their growth. And also working with New Japan too. And, you know, when they did the crossover show and, and Kyrie's obviously defends on some of the New Japan shows, I think that helps too because New Japan have got quite a good Western audience too. So yeah. there's little ways like that where I feel like they're, they're starting to get people in. I'm yeah. stardom. <laughs> I, I love it so much. And we brought Mercedes in. Were you there at Wrestle Kingdom the night that Mercedes appeared because again that shook the wrestling world when you think of things that could happen in 2023 right off the bat i people were like yeah i hear rumors but uh, you know uh, she's going back she's coming back to the wwe and then boom mercedes monet appears is born shows up at wrestle kingdom puts her mark on that championship belt what was your reaction if were you there and what was your reaction yeah, so backstage? I, was, I was there no, no i was i was there my, I was there and a few other girls from Stardom were there because, you know, you've got to check out the competition. You know, I knew she was coming, so I, I had to be there. Wrestle Kingdom's amazing, but especially for, you know, the IWGP women's match and I knew Mercedes was coming. So, yeah, I was there. It was very cool to be in the room when, when she came out. So it, it definitely shook things up. I'm very excited to see what happens next. You know, there's a lot of women I think she's going to mix up with. It's going to be really cool. So... Yeah, I was glad I could be there for that because it was kind of surreal because I debuted for Stardom not even a week before mm. and then Mercedes debuted and obviously like I watched her kind of like when I was finishing school and deciding like, you know, I really want to wrestle, I really want to wrestle but I needed that like kick to do it. And I remember watching some of her matches and being like, man, I want to wrestle like that. 
and it's kind of weird that now like I've debuted for a company and then she debuted and I'm like we're really living in a timeline where I'm in the same company as Mercedes so it was very cool and uh, she she killed it and um, I'm very excited for our match as well I think it's going to be it's going to be something special yeah, the numbers came in after that, too, and it was some rec- ridiculous amount of people watching Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, the percentage from the year before and now was, I think it was at like 60% up, and to me, that is just a testament to her fan audience joining in. Like, obviously, the card was great anyways. Kenny Omega and Osprey, you had Okada and Jay White. It was, in- what a what a night, but this these fans who didn't really watch New Japan suddenly were like, wait a minute, Sasha Banks, Mercedes is going to this place? Well, I love her. Someone, the fandom followed her. And that's incredible business-wise to bring in all these numbers and rising up, making money, because that's really what it is, you know, wrestling business. <laughs> I do want to, you know, go I, I want, this year alone, like, I want to check off some New Japan, some stardom. So there's going to be opportunities. Definitely do. Like, so that was my first ever, well, this is my first time in Japan. So my first Wrestle Kingdom, and they thought they were allowing some cheering back as well. So it was a great, great first one to have in. So what's it like very, living very in cool. Japan? Because obviously, you know, um, I don't know. Did you speak the language? No, I don't. So I am learning, but obviously that's like a, a whole task in itself. So Mean is helping me. Um, I'm learning Japanese. And so um, it, living here is amazing. Like I, the thing I love about Japan is you can spend time alone and it's not weird. Like I feel like in the UK, if I went for dinner on my own, people would be like, oh, she's been stood up like what a loser like they, you know, first like, off shocking that someone would think own. they would stand you up that's a shock right there but uh, <laughs> that makes it worse <laughs> and then and, but, you know in japan like today i had a, an interview this morning and then i had a shoot and then i just went to the city and i went shopping and i went and had like a massive meal by myself and no one looked at me weird. i mean a few people were like but no one looked at me. I think that's just the blonde hair. Yes. But like, you know, no one thinks it's weird. Like it's kind of made for you to sit in your own little booth. And I love Japan. Like everyone's so polite and respectful. Like even getting the, because tr- I live in London. So like in London, getting like the train or the subway, I think you guys call it. Yes, like, the subway. You're fighting for your life in there. You're getting shoved. Pushed, Mind, the <laughs> Mind the gap. Mind the gap. In Japan, like they just form a queue. No, no one says anything. No one. It just forms a quiet queue, and you're like, "Wow!" Like I'm not getting squashed in a. Yeah, it just. It's just I mean, that's such a random like thing for me to like like, but I just love how respectful it is and how safe it is, especially you know being here on my own and how much there is to do. This it's so rich here and just food and culture and history and entertainment. So much to do. So I've like made a long list of things to do on my days off because I'm on my own now. Zaya's left, so. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot to do. So I love living in Japan. It's really cool. I've settled in very good, well. Good. I, I like the idea of not having to talk to people, but <laughs> I did, but I do it for a living as well. Oh, oh no, I, 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 I on my own. pour right? all my energy out in, in an interview, and then after someone wants to talk to me, I'm like, I'm sorry. Are you a, re- a professional leave, wrestler? Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't prepare questions for you. Leave me alone. But, Literally, uh, like in the UK, I used to put like you know big overhead like headphones like you oh, have yeah. on. When I would go shopping on my own, because I I was just like the first time I ever did, I did it by accident after the gym, and I was like, that was amazing. Like no one spoke to me, because <laughs> I feel like when you do like stuff in entertainment, you you give everything to it, and then when you're on your own, you're just like, I just want to like hear silence. <laughs> I 100% agree. I have your own soundtrack of life versus whatever the grocery store is playing. And I'm like, oh, man, yeah. this song keeps looping on. Is I feel so bad for people who work here because I bet this song crying. keeps playing over and over and over again. But nah, what are you gonna do? Uh, though in 2019, you were part of a WWE UK Performance Center trio. What? How'd this come to be? Because I know sometimes they reach out to you, you reach out to them, a recruiter. Like, what was the process? Wow, that feels like a lifetime ago. Oh my gosh! So, yeah. um, no, they reached out to me. Because I'd only had like, well, when they reached out to me, I'd had two matches or one match, and then um. By the time I had my tryout, I think I'd have like four matches. Um, it was an amazing experience. Like, because a tryout in itself with sort of me is it's you don't, you know, there might be like a wrestling match, but it's a lot of drills and fitness and promos. So all of that I'd been training really hard because I trained quite a bit before I actually had my first match. So in that side of things, like cool, great. But yeah, the, it was kind of surreal when they asked me. I thought it was fake. Like I immediately checked like the handle 
because I was like I've had like one match but you know obviously I wanted to go to WWE and I was like oh um but yeah no that that, that was a great experience too was, I learned a lot from that as well but um yeah that, that was like so long ago 2019 wow. we're in 2023 so yeah that was uh a couple of years yeah. ago yeah because I remember it, I hadn't wrestled for long and then you know I got all my feedback and then I wrestled for like not even a year and then we went into a lockdown and I didn't do anything for like a year and a half. Like I couldn't wrestle at all. So, it, it yeah, it does feel like it feels like a different person. <laughs> well, you've experienced so much over the past few years. Obviously, uh, life experiences will change your mindset and how you feel about a lot of things. So, what? So you just mentioned for a year and a half, the pandemic hindered you in your career. What were you doing there during that time, making money? Because obviously, I know you're an actress and you're model and you've done other things. But what were you doing for that year and a half? <laughs> sleeping <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um see you know what funnily enough though so the hardest part was not wrestling and then also yeah i'm an entertainer so so, so much of what we do you can do like sets were closed you know the, well, even with modeling i had to do shoots at home and like i, I lived with my parents at the time and oh my gosh it was a madhouse because there was so there was two dogs there was a baby there was my brothers his girlfriend oh there was so much happening um and I remember, like, I've always been keen on, like, sharing my journey with people. I do YouTube. I've always been big on being very candid and open about my passion and my training and my ups and my downs and everything like that. And so I was like, well, how in lockdown, obviously, I can't wrestle. Uh, and I didn't know how long that was going to be for. Obviously, it turned out to be quite a long time. Mm -hmm. I was like, what can I do to, like, keep building Mariah May? Because when you're a wrestler, you're not just a wrestler. You're a brand. So I really went like headfirst into my YouTube. I started a Twitch channel and I'm a partner now on Twitch, which is like where I'll play games, but mostly just like hang out with my fans and my community and help them get to know me. And that really, in a weird way, like as much as lockdown was like the worst, it actually helped my career a lot because I just put so much time into content. And in a weird way, you're able to reach people all around the world. So I was able to like build like a global fan base. Whereas maybe if I was just wrestling in the UK, you're wrestling in front of like 50 people, maybe every weekend, every other weekend, you could argue that like, you know, in a way it was kind of smarter to like do that. Now I found like a middle ground, but yeah, so it was good and bad, obviously bad, not wrestling and, and a mixture of other things, but it was cool because I think, yeah. And in terms of making money too, that helped me like sell merch I made money off of Twitch so I was able to like supplement my income and it really taught me a lot as well about being an independent you know artist and like how to have different revenue streams and stuff like that and I talk about that a lot on Twitch as well because like people ask me for advice on it and I'm like it's really important to have more than one revenue stream if lockdown taught us anything you might lose one you might get injured and you can't wrestle for a year or however long or you know you don't know what's going to happen so it's important to have like different income streams that will still function without each other so yeah I definitely learned a lot in lockdown and I just basically made a lot of content <laughs> that, that's how I, I, I stayed relevant <laughs> I was gonna say what else are you gonna do in a year and a half when you're locked down you know it, it was very weird because I never I didn't experience a lockdown situation for my personally because where I'm where I live they locked things down but I was an essential worker so I never stayed home i never worked from home i was driving on that highway like i could have swerved from every lane if i wanted to there was not one person i could have walked to work in the middle of a highway and not been touched by a car it was really wow. surreal seeing all these yeah. cars in your driveways but me just driving down the street and i had that to feel like I, very like post-apocalyptic like oh. you know those zombie movies and like no one's there i, I don't yes. know if i'd like that oh I had that, if i used to go to set at like 3 4 a.m or when I come back from wrestling shows like 3 4 a.m it's the same thing it's pretty empty and it's yes. just it's a good feeling and a bad feeling because at the same time say you're walking and uh, I'm not say maybe you're walking the streets walking home at three in the morning well pretty much you might find nobody or one crazy stranger and, right and you don't know which one you're gonna get I'm so gonna be in the news in the morning <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's the that's the sad part about uh, three in the morning. But it was yeah, it was very surreal driving back and forth, working and not having anybody around. It was very awkward uh, where I was working. It well, so do uh, only ten people were allowed in the building at the time. So oh, only ten yeah, of us, yeah. but a huge TV station studio. It was so awkward. 
uh, and no one wanted to go anywhere and anybody had a government signed paper that said I could drive, I could leave my house, I could do this, I could do that. So if a cop pulled me over, I'd be like, hello. I'm allowed to be here. I'm essential, just like a liquor store somehow. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, liquor stores are you always needed that. You, you needed that. I think a lot of drinking <laughs> problems were created during the pandemic. But we'll have to, it's another side problem for a lot of people. <laughs> though with stardom, though, growing at such a rapid rate, there's obviously more eyeballs on you than ever. And I'm imagining that organizations like Impact Wrestling or AEW or even WWE now are like, wait a minute, did we make a mistake? And how does that feel? Because I'm assuming someone's reaching out to you saying, when are you available? When does your stardom dates end? When can we get you here? Is that happening? I can't say what is or isn't happening. I mean, like for me, and like I, when I started wrestling and I discovered stardom, that was my number one goal. Yeah. And I've achieved it. Like I said earlier, it's literally like, you know, when you complete a video game, like I've completed Pokemon. And now I'm in the post credits and I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> like, it's like, I've, I've got to start a new game now. I've got to have like a new big dream because I didn't think this would happen now or maybe ever. But mm. um, no, for me, like stardom is my goal. And with stardom too, there is just such a depth of things I want to do. Like there's so many people I want to wrestle. There's so many storylines. Like I have ideas and you know, I know there's other ideas flying around. And I've got like a list, some things I'll, you know, I will share over time some things I'm keeping close to the chest of things I want to achieve. So, you know, for the foreseeable, this is where I'm going to be. Like, I'm not going anywhere. And I've got a lot I want to do. So stardom, number one. Number it's your one. <laughs> How does that make you feel too as, as well as when you achieve a dream, when you say, oh, I, all I need is this and I'll be happy. All I need is that and I'll be happy. And you got it. You have it. Are you happy? Uh, yeah is there a goal that you're like okay i achieved it but what's next now i'm not yeah, saying anything I mean, my poor brain, on stardom my stardom's brain. great but at the same time when you achieve a dream you're like okay i did it and you're obviously very yeah. young so it's like okay well what's next <laughs> retirement <laughs> no. my brain is like i'm I'm like that like i'll get one thing and then i'm like i want this this and this so like i've already like i said you know i've got all these things i want to do now in stardom yeah. so i have like these new like i mean i'm I, I stardom was my big goal but then I also had a few things I want to do in stardom as well that I've always dreamed of and I've like seen in my mind like I like dream at night I'm like okay this is what I want this is what I want so it it, it I was very happy like I remember when I because I when I debuted I didn't wrestle I just accompanied Mina to the ring kind of introduced Club Venus so yeah. that was a weird one because normally when you wrestle after you wrestle you get like this like post buzz like I can't describe the feeling it's 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 amazing so it was weird because you were being celebrated but I was like I haven't done anything I haven't wrestled like I haven't but what are you guys saying well done for you know so so it was a weird middle period where like I I debuted and I got all this like love and and so many messages and I, I was like very like emotional but I was kind of like I feel like and then once I had my first match, I remember after my match, I did go and cry on, alone. <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing this in front of people, but I just went and cried, like happiness of just relief, like it actually happened. Because it's so strange, like when you have such a big dream, you just, you work so hard, but you get kicked down so many times. You just don't, you don't ever, you don't ever know if it's going to happen. And even if you think it is, it might not, it might not. And wrestling is so you know up and down one day something's happening one day it's not you just never know so yeah I, it, I was really really happy and I I honestly just feel like this past month like when my mum called me and, and like she's talking to me she's like I've never seen you so happy like you, you just seem like lighter like your shoulders have dropped and like you just seem and we were just talking about like food or something <laughs> but you know like <laughs> I mean I'm always happy when I talk about food but like we were just talking about life and like she just said oh, she's just you you just seem really really happy and I said like I am like I, I didn't even, it's just this like it's changed like my life you know yeah. so yeah I was really really happy but you can't stay happy for too long you gotta keep driving to the next thing so I've got a lot on my mind now that I want to do so I've already set those new goals but yeah it was a great feeling clearly your mom sees your confidence growing as well because like a parent you obviously see your children at their best and the worst and she has seen you probably up and down left and right and the fact that she's seeing you, well, you described it as your your shoulders are down. You're feeling more probably confident because of all the things you're achieving versus before you were trying to achieve them. And then you are achieving them, which obviously adds check marks. Um, and suddenly you're 
more aware of your value than before hoping things would happen. Clearly things are happening for you. Uh, though I did see recently on Twitter, someone bought you a star in the sky. Yes, and it's That's in the amazing. princess region. Like, how cute. And they sent me the um, certificate. Shout out, James. They sent me the certificate as well for it. So I have a certificate for this star. Right, man. Wow. That's just so cool. How does that feel? You look up in the sky, you know, there's the North Star. Oh, there's wait, me. There, there's me. Oh, there I no am. Mega star. Bye, bye. <laughs> yeah, it, there's been a few things like that, like pitch me moments. Like, you know, some people have got tattoos. Um, even as well, like when I do, I run my own merch store, so I have like my signed portraits. And um, when I write out the addresses and it's like, before I came to Japan, I'd have fans in Japan, Germany, Italy, America, UK. Like, I'm like, how like what like this is so weird you know like in a great way but it's just like at the time when I'd only wrestled in the UK I'm like oh my god like you believe in me to the point where you bought like a piece of merchandise for me um all over the world so it's little it's little things like that where you think that's why I'm doing it because you're clearly connected with someone and like that is why you wrestle you wrestle to just feel something and to make other people feel something so it's very cool when you kind of form those connections all over the world and someone buys you a star <laughs> that's the pretty i've got i'm gonna get it framed at home because that's just so cool that's amazing too it's, like, it's funny because i remember you i remember years ago i discovered you could buy a star and i was just like how does one buy a star like who how do you own the, yeah, who owns them. the sky yeah you're just like oh, i bought that and then an alien Who's finds out who who made stars a capitalist thing is what I want to know. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> realized them? it. They were like, how do I make money off of something you can't actually hold in your hand? So you'd be like, I bought you a box of oxygen. See? It's right here. I bought it for you. It's, it, it, they're like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> but hey, someone did it. Someone obviously loves you Someone's enough to, smart. to spend the money on buying you a star. I know. Isn't that interesting? I, I soon enough, I'll buy you a, a, a nice piece of grass in the ground i'll buy you a cloud yeah uh, yeah exactly <laughs> it might disappear <laughs> yeah. from, you don't get a refund the cloud is subject to change it might disappear <laughs> it might come back but it, it's always in the sky it's yours uh, it's yours <laughs> trust me it is uh with 19.99 a month you can own that cloud that might disappear but <laughs> it also might not it also might rain yeah, no shit. And the fact that someone bought you a star is incredible because clearly, again, it was brought it up. Your dreams are being achieved. People are buying you stars. You're in stardom. Like everything is working out for you right now. But who is your dream opponent right now in stardom or in general in professional wrestling? Because I think a lot of people want to, all these companies want to fight each other. Like the wrestlers want to wrestle each other. It's not like I hate you and you hate me. Like the Twitter, how well, Twitter really thinks the world works. But in reality, it seems like a lot of people are friends on a lot of organizations. But oh, Twitter yeah. doesn't want to believe that. But also, it is good for business when you have a rival going. So, who is someone you are looking there's to wrestle? There's a lot. Wrestle? There's a lot. Like I said, I mean, I've got a lot of things I want to do in stardom and, and different people I want to wrestle, but also like bring like a storyline to it and bring like a bit of a more Western little twist to things. Yeah. Um, I mean, right now in stardom, Azumi and Starlight Kid are definitely kind of what I'm looking at in front of me. Um, you know, Julia was someone I've watched over the past year and like her rise and her storyline. I don't think I'm there yet. I think, you know, she's now, I, mean, she, I was there when she won the championship, which was really cool because I'd watched her whole year. And then to to be there for that was pretty cool. But, um, you know, I, I don't, think that's for now but you know look into this year Azumi and Starlight Kid I definitely want to have a singles um and yeah I mean from other companies there's really cool people Jamie Hay is really cool because like she's from the UK and she did stardom and she stayed in stardom for a good amount of time and just hustled and did the work and I feel like she's like you know I don't know how to explain it like she just kind of just quietly just became the superstar overnight uh, which I thought was really cool that she just bet on herself and went and did it, you know, and she's her success just is because of her hard work too. So she's really cool. Mercedes, obviously, you know, she's someone I've looked up to for a long time. I could go on. I mean, there's a lot of people. And I think too, to your point about like how everyone thinks everyone's rivals, you have to remember like these people, we all train together, you know, we all came up together and we all went to different places together and you know you're always happy to see your friend's success and the more wrestling there is the better you know I never understand why people I, I mean I get preferences for sure 
but more wrestling is never a bad thing ever so you know i love watching loads of different stuff so yeah wishing yeah. for a company to collapse because you don't agree with their matches or <laughs> storylines it's like i don't think they realize it's just like i hope they go out of business for what reason because you don't like them being another entity they'd be like watching tv and there's a cop drama well guess what on every channel there's a cop drama so there's a cop drama everywhere <laughs> you hope yeah no kidding so it's like you hope one fails so the people who not just the, the actors or the, the wrestlers in this case uh production lighting audio directors mm -hmm. referees the ring crew it's not people are i think unaware that the wrestlers aren't the people putting the you know everything together you're not up there with the lights moving around the spotlight like you're performing someone's doing that Maybe for you yeah <laughs> it, is, it is a little bizarre to me that someone would want a company to fail like when i was a kid and wcw versus wwe was happening sure i was 13 years old so i didn't care i didn't know like damn you wcw hurting my wwe as a grown-ass <laughs> man i'm like are you insane <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i mean as well like it, it just means more opportunity because if you gathered up all the wrestlers and like i don't know stardom new japan AEW, WWE, impact and we're like look there's only one company a lot of people are going to lose a job yes. and you know like you said a lot of behind the scenes people and then a lot of fans are going to lose something they enjoy like i think what's cool as well is like every like every every company tries to give a little bit of everything but they all have their own styles like i watch some wwe i watch some AEW, i watch a little bit of impact obviously watch stardom i watch some independence i like a little bit of everything and on some shows i don't like all of it so i might just tune in to watch a women's match or i might be invested in some of the tag stuff but recently i've been loving the AEW, the trio stuff they've done so because obviously with club venus i was like you know i want to i want to watch the best of the best do trios matches so it's like there's something for everyone and i think the, you know I, I get why fans might not enjoy everything but if you don't like something just don't watch it there's there a lot go. of things i don't like i don't watch them i know <laughs> I, don't why, I don't like this show so i'm gonna watch it and then tweet about it <laughs> and i just hate on it. guess for it what are you <laughs> doing with your time <laughs> watch something you like god like i'm gonna choose to watch something <laughs> i don't like that is crazy talk but yeah. there are plenty of people who do it for a living. So um, <laughs> there's a business for everything. People are buying stars. People are making money off hating. That is actually a good point. I think some people just do it because it gets a lot of traction. So oh, they're just yeah. playing a game. It's all about the impressions. Monetization. Yeah, hey? it's all about the, the monetizing, the analytics, the, the impressions, it, uh, the tweets, the likes. It's, that's all that matters. But where do you see yourself in one year? Because obviously the past few months since November, during stardom, your your star is flying high. Where do you see yourself in one year? I never know. If the past few years have taught me anything, it's that a lot of things can change. But if things go the way I want them to, it's just climbing the ranks in stardom. You know, there's a, I've got a match on Saturday, and if I win it, I get to go for any championship I want. And I'm looking at the high speed. I'm looking at SWA. So... In a year, I'd like to be holding some gold. I'd like to be, you know, paving the way for, for British women and, and showing what we can do. So that's where I'm seeing myself. Who knows? Who knows? And Maybe may, owning another star. And may, and maybe making a TikTok video to teach everyone how to do the, oh, the Club yeah. Venus dance. Do, do, do. I, I think we need to, I think we need to get this going because I, I you know I have three children and I want to be cool. So help me be cool. Yes. Help me be cool. Okay. <laughs> don't hold back don't be holding back to coolness give me some sprinkle it reminds me of like zara and i trying to learn the dance too because i you know i watched mina when she did the whole dance but she moves so quick and she's so good and so like you need it like kind of like that slow like a one or two and like it reminds me of the first show zara and i were in the bathroom <laughs> yeah i'll be doing it too uh, you gotta practice practice makes perfect yeah <laughs> I'll make a TikTok for everyone. I've been there, guys. Good. <laughs> I'll, I'll teach you. <laughs> well, yeah, please, please tweet, tweet me at Steve Fall. Make sure I become cool again, you know, with, with my children, <laughs> uh, you know. But uh, I got to say, it has been a pleasure talking to you today. Mariah May, thank you so much. Again, I think the world is yours. Clearly, the sky Aww. is yours because someone bought you a star. So the someone rest, bought me it. <laughs> now the planet Earth needs to be yours as well because we already own the sky. Let's own the land as well. But I just want to say thank you so much for being here on 10 Count. I've been Steve Fall. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>